everyone, I'm Linda Nickel, and welcome to the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. If this is your first time joining us, we do this every week here on Zoom with a guest photographer that shares their expertise, creativity, and inspiration to help you improve your photography experience. You can find a list of upcoming presentations on my website at lindanickel.com. And if you miss a session, you can always find them linked to my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do, because I like to sneak in bonus sessions like the one that I posted this morning, where I sat down with Robert McGee to talk about Meyer Optic Gorlitz lenses. And last month, I chatted with my friend Russ Moore about his 60 plus years as a photographer, from his film days, then going to digital, and now being a mirrorless shooter. It was really an interesting presentation, and I'd love it if you take time to check it out. My guest tonight is Vineeth Radhakrishnan, also known as Venakrish on Instagram. Ven is a wildlife photographer based in Dallas, whose passion for bird photography has filled his Instagram feed with a beautiful and colorful collection of feathered images. Vin has traveled across Texas and beyond to photograph his subjects. And his work has been featured many times over through Instagram and published in magazines from his homeland of India. In tonight's presentation, Vin will share his photographic journey in a session he's titled, My Approach to Bird Photography. Vin's gonna share his thoughts and tips on planning, visualizing, and capturing images that include the habitats and colorful backgrounds to make his images pop. So welcome to the Happiness Hour, Vin. And uh, thank you. <laughs> so this is, okay, so let me just lay the groundwork. I am in uh, an area called Quintana, which is kind of in the Galveston, it's along the Gulf Coast. And I was there um, to shoot the fall migration and I met a couple of people. Well, actually like, Ben Cowan's in the room. Spring and, migration. Yeah. And so I was, I was out there and I was just kind of shooting and minding my own business. And I look up and these two gentlemen are walking straight at me and one's kind of doing this. And I'm like, I don't know you. <laughs> I don't know who he is. And he gets a little closer because he's making a beeline for me. And then I realized, wait a minute, that could be, I think that's Finnecrish. And, and it was. And so that was where we met. That was just the spring. And somewhere in that very short exchange, I said, hey, would you ever con consider coming and doing a happiness hour presentation for my group? And he's like, sure. And that's all you have to say to me is like, if I can get an inkling of a yes, I'm going to turn it into, let's get it on the calendar. So thank you for saying yes. Thank you for showing up. And, um, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I've been following you for a little while and I, and I'm kind of partial because I've met you and, and, um, I think your work is, is absolutely amazing. So, um, how about you first pronounce your name for us? Because I know I butchered it. I told you I would. And then tell us a little bit about how you became a bird photographer. Okay. Yeah. My name is Vineet Radhakrishnan. Uh, thank you, Linda, for the kind words. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just start by sharing how it all started. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I used to be a landscape photographer uh, mainly. Uh, I can't say landscape photographer. I just had a camera. I used to capture landscapes. That's all I can say. I, it was just more of snapshots in those days. So, yeah, I, I used to be uh, in Austin those days. So yeah, I had a new lens, uh, Tamron 16 to 300. And uh, actually I was starting back after a big break. So I, was, I think I read an article about uh, some Texas waterfalls. And uh, while I was going through that article, I found that there are some, uh, a couple of them are near Austin. And I thought, okay, I'll go check it out and test my new lens. So uh, yeah, the, it was Pedernales State for Pedernales Falls State Park. Mm -hmm. uh, so the falls is within the name itself. So I thought it's going to be beautiful. And I saw some pictures online and I thought I can give it a try and try to capture it in my own way. 
and i went there one fine morning just after sunrise i hiked up to the main falls or where the main falls is supposed to be <laughs> so i reached there and then i found that there is no water it is all dry right so uh, i was like i was disappointed of course with because of the new lens that i wanted to test and then i was trying to get back into photography and stuff so yeah i was disappointed and then uh, of course there was nothing else to do it was all dry even not even a single or small falls was flowing so i just went back to the car and i was on the way back to the parking lot or the entrance basically uh, so i was going back then i suddenly saw this small sign on the side uh, saying bird blind right uh, yeah uh, so those who who have been to that state park would know that it's like a good two two or three bird blinds there so i just went inside i haven't even known i, I didn't even know anything about birds until then like uh, what are the common birds or i haven't even seen them actually so anyway i just I wanted to test the lens out basically so it was a 16 to 300 so i could i thought i could use that 300 end of the lens to some use uh so i just went in there and uh i i sat in the blind and there was one another guy with uh, there and he was having a big lens uh, like i think it was a 600 prime or something like that so i was like okay i'm uh, going in there with this tiny <laughs> little 300 and i was like okay anyway i'll give it a try uh, because i didn't have anything to lose anyway so i just uh, started clicking and i was like i was still in the landscape mode with the timer on aperture priority uh, like a slower shutter speed so whatever i clicked didn't come out right in the beginning then anyway since birds were coming in non stop because there were bird feeders there uh, i had the time and then i quickly changed all the uh, settings i i knew it uh, it has to be fast shutter speed so anyway i changed everything and i started clicking and then the first bird that i clicked was uh, cardinal like male northern cardinal and i was like i was like i was in awe of that beauty like uh, i didn't know it was a common bird and then but i just loved the bird and i clicked away <laughs> so many shots uh, so many blurred shots because i didn't have any idea what i was doing at then so anyway that that morning was fun and then i went back i think with two memory card full of shots uh, I, i went in and then started processing like everything was delete 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 <laughs> because everything was blurry uh, and then uh, finally i found one uh, close to sharp enough uh, photo and then i processed that and posted i think it was in my facebook page and then people started commenting liking uh, of course all my my friends so they would only tell good things so right. anyway i was i was happy about it because it was my first bird shot that i posted uh then i started posting on some birds uh, birds of texas group and that's when i really uh uh came to know more about birds first thing i learned was uh, cardinal is not a rare bird or anything it is like everywhere and everybody see them every day i didn't know that at the time anyway uh, so that group was something that really encouraged me uh, because i used to post a lot there i used to see posts from other photographers there so i started posting there more and more and that's when i came to know about the other places in texas where to shoot what to see all those things and then uh, yeah one fine day i i saw the photo of a painted bunting and then i am like okay i want to see that bird so i did some research ebird google and everything and i saw uh, some spots near austin uh, that where they are seen normally uh, so i went there with the small 300 mainly with the lens and tried to take some pictures but never worked i didn't get even a good shot uh, but obviously i loved that bird so i was like okay i want to get a better lens and then i purchased a, purchased the sigma 150 to 600 bigger zoom lens so uh, that's how i started then i bought my 600 mm lens the cheap, cheapest available 600 mm uh, so i bought that and then uh of course i went around again to shoot the painted bunting yeah and then the the day i got a shot uh, that's when i realized okay i'm not going to return the lens i'm going to keep it and i was like totally into bird photography then uh so 
I'm one of these people um, that didn't get to see a painted bunting until like recently. Yeah. And so you got to see it right off the bat. And it's kind of like the first time you see a painted bunting, it's like you're totally into birds then. Yeah. There's something really special about that bird. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, you're just talking about it and you're getting excited just talking about it. It's, it's funny. Yeah, it, it's not that I just saw it first time because although I saw them first in Austin, uh, after that, I didn't get to see them immediately. Once I bought the lens, I traveled uh, to South Texas coast for the spring migration, right. trying to get a glimpse. But of course, I didn't see them there. But then Austin, where I was living, they are there already. So anyway, after the migration, I came back. Uh, I, that's when I saw them uh, in Austin. But the first shot I got of him was, I, I'll show you that later in the presentation. It was like, yeah, it, it was, that bird is like just, mind-blowing so <laughs> it's like well, just... what i found found interesting when i was talking to you uh, when we were doing our prep session is um in fact susan's going to ask this question how long you've been shooting birds that's what i was going to bring up when you told me how long you've been shooting birds i'm like are you kidding me all right tell us how long have you been shooting to go from deleting a whole bunch of blurry photos to what you're producing now yeah it's been a little over four years uh yeah so uh, obviously, I had a basic understanding of photography before that. Uh, so the light and uh, sharpness and everything that it wasn't much of a difference. So learning about b birds and how to get them in a different heat, sorry, different frames, different situations. That's what I was concentrating more on uh, rather than just getting a bird in a shot. I wanted to have a specific shot that was in my mind and have a bird in it. That's how I perceive my shots. Uh, rather than chasing just birds or rare birds, I look for photographs. Uh, basically, uh, obviously, bird is a beautiful subject always. So when you have that birds in the frame, uh, how do you make it better or how do you make it more beautiful? That's that's how I see bird photography. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get to your presentation because okay. there are a lot of samples of of bird images. So we are um, approaching fall migration here in here in Texas. And um, I, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you'd have uh, seen my uh, title already my approach to bird photography. Uh, I uh, titled it this way because of some reasons that I'll mention later. Uh, so I'll just get into this uh, about me. So my name is Vineet Radhakrishnan. Uh, I'm a software engineer by profession and then nature bird or night sky photographer by passion. I just do this on my free time. So yeah, I don't have a website. So I'm that's why I'm just listing my social media pages. Uh, that's where I post my photos. Instagram is most common, of course. Uh, and then I have my uh, presence in the other platforms platforms as well, 500 pigs, Flickr and Facebook. So yeah, as I said, Instagram is the easiest way to reach me or see my pictures. Uh, but if you want to see the pictures in a bigger uh, screen, you can uh, look at the other platforms as well. Yeah, so yeah, this is where I was telling earlier, this is a disclaimer, I'm just putting it out there because uh, I just don't want anyone to confuse it with other photographers or other approaches there. These are strictly my opinions and my approach and what works for me, like uh, the settings or the way I shoot, everything is my own preferences or opinions. Yeah, I just want to put it out there. Uh, just, you know. we're, we're good with that. That's, yeah. that's why you're here because you're bringing something. Um, and you know, I, we've had bird photographer workshop guides, uh, professionals, everybody has the, what works for them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so, that, that's the thing, right? When professionals say uh, they can be more authoritative, but I can't be that. No, that's yeah, it, you're fine, totally fine. Okay. Okay, so this is the list of contents. Uh, so uh, first thing I already shared how I started, I'll show you the pictures uh, down the line. Then these are the main points I want to uh, put it out there. Uh, the light, uh, probably the most important factor for any type of photography. 
uh, and the different types of light we get and how we can make use of that. And then composition. So when I talk about composition, uh, I'm not going to talk about any uh, rule of thirds or any other particular rules, because those are all are just rules. Uh, I don't just follow them blindly uh, at all, how it comes to my mind at the time. So I'll, I'll uh, discuss about the other factors I consider. And then uh, flight and action charts. Uh, so basically, uh, probably the chal most challenging uh, part of uh, wildlife photography and which is something I always enjoy. And then favorite seasons. So what do we get in different season and how do I approach them? And then the method of shooting. Uh, so yeah, everybody has their own different methods uh, to get what they want or what they perceive. So these are my approaches. And then finally gear and settings. I just put it at the last because that I think that's the least important of what I'm uh, going to discuss here. So yeah, uh, so these are the first set of images uh, I'm sharing. And these are the ones I uh, talked about earlier, what I shot in uh, Pedernales State Park. As you can see, this is from a state park bird blind. So you can see all the bird food and their dry sticks in the perches. So, and composition wise also, when I look back, yeah, I don't think uh, this is how a bird shot looked like. But then that's how I started, and that's why I loved it at the time. Uh, so these are sample images my from, from my first day. So on the top, the cardinal, that was probably the first shot I shared. And then that's, as the light improved, you can see the sharpness got better. Anyway, but even the last uh, image of the cardinal, the bottom one, even though it is sharp, he's sitting on a dry branch and eating the bird fruit which is something I would avoid later in my uh, photographic journey. So yeah, I'll go to the next screen. So yeah, first point is the light, right? So basically there are three types of light we mo mostly come into, the natural light, I mean. So uh, those are like cloudy conditions, then the golden hour, and of course the harsh light, which I try to avoid shooting. So as, as you can see, the left, born the cardinal with a berry that's like that was taken in a cloudy uh, weather and the cardinal on top is a one golden hour shot and the one in the bottom is a harsh light shot you can see uh, clearly the difference uh, there is shadows and highlights which is like blown out in that uh, bird body so uh, looking at these pictures itself uh, i normally prefer shooting in cloudy light especially the songbirds because you uh, you can you don't have to worry about the clouds or shadows and highlights. Also, you get to uh, shoot for a long longer time. So that's why I prefer cloudy uh, cloudy uh, conditions. And then uh, when I uh, of course the golden hour is like the golden hour for any type of photography. So I love shooting in that uh, particular time. So one good thing about that is you can shoot front lit and back lit uh, because the light is not harsh. And uh, I love shooting short birds during that hour or even the ducks uh, because any anything that is in the water. The reason is that uh, the way that golden light uh, reflects in the water or from the background, it, it gives you this golden orange colors. So this uh, the image on the left is a ruddy turnstone. Uh, again, it's a friendless, a friendless shot. I was on the beach and uh, I was getting that go orange background because of the golden sunlight. And the image on the light, uh, right is a reddish grid, white morphed. It was a backlit shot. I think it was after sunset. That's why you don't have a sun effect on the shot, but still all, have all those colors in the background. And uh, both these were taken in, I think in, one was in Galveston and the other one was in Corpus Christi uh, in the Texas coast. And then uh, this is a backlit shot, again, an American oyster catch, catcher. So sun, set, sun was setting behind and I was laying on the beach and noticed this guy was coming in. He actually came close to me and I was like on the ground, so he didn't mind my presence. Anyway, the, the factor that I love most about this shot is the light that is coming through those wings. So this is possible only when it is backlit or only during the golden hour. And that's what makes this photo special for me. It's one of my favorite shots that I've ever taken. 
and then this is a villet again backlit early morning uh, so he was calling out his mate and uh, the backlit effect is what you see in his head with that rim light and then this is a wood deck uh, taken here in dallas again late evening i think it was almost sun, sun was setting behind and uh, apart from the colors that is there in the water one thing that really likes i really like in this photo is the if you look at the top third one third of the shot you can see some small dots those are actually bugs uh, that that are flying around so those were close to me and were out of focus but they were lit by the setting sun and uh, i was shooting like fully zoomed in in, uh, in, in beginning like 600 uh, zoom and i was getting only the uh, duck and the golden colors in the shot but when i noticed these bugs are flying around i zoomed out to probably 400 and included those bugs also in the shot and that's what made the shot for me in this occasion and then this is a common loon uh, again this is a backlit shot and the sun rays were coming through some trees behind the bird and it was hitting all the water there and that's what produced all those golden colors there and then uh, yeah it's not just about uh, uh, shore birds or ducks for the golden light you can shoot even the golden i mean the song birds so in this occasion obviously my favorite bird painted bunting this is a friendly shot uh, it was taken here in erring and then the next shot the same bird uh, same perch but this was front lit and this was back lit so basically this was taken early morning and then this was late evening but on the same perch so he loves this perch for uh, for a reason so this bird is like he always hangs out in that uh, spot uh, so i have noticed him uh, always sitting on a dead branch uh, close to this area he always sits in the dead branch and which was not giving any particular interest for me so what i did was i removed that that branch from the scene uh, then after that uh, from the next day he started using this perch so then i was able to frame him perfectly and plan for the different lighting conditions uh, i have shot this bird many times so i have like uh, different uh, shots in the different lighting of the same bird but i particularly like this two shots because it's like same perch same uh, spot and then different lighting conditions that's why i just uh, i was setting this as an example okay uh, next uh, the another important uh, point about uh, my composition elements uh, so background right uh, so yeah apart from the bird or uh, the other elements in the screen or in the image uh, something that you can make sure to set them apart from the other images is a background so for me uh, a background can make or break an image even though you have all the beautiful subject or anything else in the image if your background is not good or uh, it is not setting the bird from uh, apart from the others then it's not going to be appealing for me so that's why i give a lot of import importance to the background so basically uh, a lot of people ask me about the backgrounds in my images uh some people have asked me bluntly asking uh what what technique in photoshop i used to create those backgrounds it's like a blunt question for me because they don't even care about what i do other than photoshop so uh, that's why i just want to put it out there how i get the background uh so basically for getting a good background you don't need a, a expensive lens or photoshop skills Uh, as long as you take care of the other factors that i'm going to discuss here so as i said i shoot with a sigma uh, 150 to 600 mm lens it is a it gives a maximum aperture of 6.3 so it's not a f4 lens uh, which will blur out, blur out the backgrounds much more and smoothly so uh, i have to make sure i get good backgrounds with the lens i have so that's why i take care of the other factors listed here so basically all i do is uh, make sure the distance between me and the subject uh, in case in this case the bird is much lesser than the uh, distance from the bird to the background or something that is immediately in the background so mostly i'll try to include uh, the tree line or even the mud uh, which will be uh, which will give us a smoother uh, background 
So, and also other factor that I always try to make sure is we have even lighting in the background because that will uh, that will even out any black spots or bright spots in the background and it will make it, it it smoother. Uh, and then if you if you want some shots you see with a black background. Uh, so for that, what you can do is uh, have a darker background or uh, some background which uh, in on which there is no light, but the bird is in good light. So that's so we get the darker background. Uh, I'll show you some examples uh, in the next slide. And then uh, other thing I almost always try to avoid is the sky uh, because sky although it is like clean and sets the bird apart it is like it is very bright so it is a tough thing to expose and also it will give you a different perspective uh, which i don't really like and then uh, of course if you don't get the background at the right uh, right when you see the bird you can just move around and try to get a, a better background i'll show you an example in the next slide so yeah, this again, a painted bunding chart. Uh, so this was taken in Austin in a trail. Uh, so when I first saw this guy, uh, obviously I started taking pictures. And then of course you have uh, some element of the sky, uh, which is like a little distracting for me. So what I did was uh, I was on the trail and uh, from the trail, I moved a bit uh, to the right. Uh, and I had to go into some bushes, but still, I did that and got this image. So all I did was to move. Uh, so in this image, if you see toward the left, top left, you have some tree, uh, tree line, and it is the starting of the tree line. So by moving to the right, I made sure that is the background for the bird. So as you can see, these two pictures are same bird, same perch. Uh, all I did was to move. So just by moving two or three spaces to my left, I could create this background, which is more appealing to me. And then these are the examples for a darker background uh, pictures. So you can see left on the left, it is a green jay, and on the right, it is a canvas back deck. So for both, uh, the background was in a dark, much darker space, meaning there was no light at all. But the bird, I, so I exposed for the bird and then get this darker background. It's a different def uh, effect. Some people like it, some people don't, but I just try to, uh, I, I like to try different things. So, so these are some examples for the dark background images. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, Linda, is there any question or anything? I'm sorry, I had you on mute. Uh, no, I don't see any questions, but okay. you're getting some you're getting some great feedback, especially of, of your looms. People are just loving the loom okay. shots. Um, yeah, I, just, I just want to make sure I'm making it clear or is, if there are any questions I can answer. Yeah, Yeah, I, I will definitely um, pull those questions to the side or if they're specific to what you're talking about. I'll interrupt you. I'm not, I'm not shy that way. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure because I'm just talking and there is no yep. feedback. Right? So, okay. You're good. You're good. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the next thing is perspective. Uh, yeah, this is another very important factor. Again, another thing that make or breaks an image. Uh, so I always try to be in the same level as a bird, uh, meaning uh, if I don't shoot up, uh, like if the bird is sitting on top of the tree or flying on the sky, uh, I don't shoot. I just wait for them to come down because it's like, it's not a, I feel like it's an awkward angle. Uh, also shooting down. So for example, when the bird is on the ground or in the water, uh, I try to avoid shooting down. Uh, because uh, when you shoot down, there won't be any background or cleaner, smoother background. Whatever is there, uh, road or water, it will be like crystal clear because there's not enough separation. So yeah, if the bird is on the ground, yeah, lay flat on the stomach. Or sometimes I can kneel down also because if I am in a uh, elevated uh, perspective, I can kneel down and make it work. Or even in the newer cameras, you have flip screen, so I make use of that. Uh, I just have the camera on the ground and I can sit and then flip the screen and get the lower perspective. It won't work always because uh, when it is on the flip screen, live screen, sometimes it won't uh, focus right, so it won't work always. So laying flat is the best way. 
uh, and uh, for the water uh, water birds or shore birds uh, i try to be in the water sometime because that will make them easier or uh, that won't scare them uh, easily so i'll show you some example down the line so yeah this is a uh, this is a three level three image series actually i had put it on uh, on instagram sometime back so this is a black crown night heron and it was shot in irving so when i saw this bird and walked upon him uh, the first uh, first image was this uh, so what i was uh, i did i kneeled down to get a eye level perspective and i shot this so i really like the way the background uh, panned out and even the foreground uh, and the separation also it is showing the water uh, this is basically a water bird and they fish uh, so i like that perspective but then the bird is not moving uh, he was not even uh, turning his head so i thought i'll experiment so next what i did was i kneel down and uh, had my elbows on the ground and i had much more lower perspective and i got this shot uh, so it's the same bird same position uh, the difference here is it has like a smoother foreground and it is transitioning into the body of the bird and then the background so here if you notice there is a background has two colors which is something i like always uh, so there is a distant tree line and the grassy field across the water so it gives a different perspective and still the bird was not moving so i just experimented more and this one i laid flat on my belly so it was like much lower perspective i could hardly see the bird i had to just lift my camera a li little bit because i was so much on the ground and it was much lower perspective so this one gives almost a dreamy smooth smooth look because it feels like he's in a cloud of grass or something like that so it's a much different uh, look and i had posted all these three on instagram once and i asked for opinions and uh, what they like what the uh, other photographers like the answer i got was like different it was spread across all three and uh, most of the bird lovers they love this picture because they can see the whole body of the bird uh, that's all they care and then most of the photographers like this because it was like different it was more artistic and then even this one was liked by many because it is mix of both they can see most of the bird and also uh, nice framing so yeah i like i like uh, to experiment like this uh, because uh, even though you have an idea you won't uh, exactly know what how it will turn out in the final image unless you try different perspective and then uh, this is a wood deck uh, so linda this is the uh, mill pond wood deck i was talking about Uh, the famous woody <laughs> so this is my first shot of him uh, you know when i was living in austin uh, i think it was probably the second week after i uh, bought my sigma camera so this is one bird that won't fly or swim away it will always come towards you that's one interesting bird out there so i didn't have to use a 600 mm lens for this because he was so close anyway uh, so this image uh, my first image of a wood duck although it captured all those colors beautifully uh, very much a close up shot uh, staring right into your eyes uh, there was something missing in the shot i didn't know at that time i really liked the shot at the time i posted everywhere and then um, the thing i i was missing was i was shooting down although i was on a duck uh, i was not standing i was sitting or laying but still i was in a elevated perspective uh, so i uh, i knew something was missing and then uh, after a few months the same duck same place uh, the difference here is i was on the shore i was laying flat uh, giving me a much uh, closer or parallel perspective so here uh, in the previous shot if you see some some of the water in the background you can clearly see it the ripples and stuff but in this one if you see only the bird is in sharp focus uh, the foreground and the background everything like smooth so it it is much more a, a, be a better looking image for me uh, or intimate image for me so yeah i'm i'm going to ask you a question because it, i think it applies to several of the images that you've been showing 
Mm -hmm. um, I think it's David wants to know what f-stop are you using to get the foreground blurry, the bird in focus, and then the background is also blurry. Yeah, uh, I shoot mostly 6.3. That's the maximum uh, aperture I can get in the lens. And uh, some of the shots I'll show later, which will be f8 because of the way that is set up. But all, all those shots that I've seen, uh, I've shown so far, it's all 613. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, that's why explaining when I started talking about background, you don't need a f4 or f2.8 lens to achieve this. All you have to take care of uh, is the other factors. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, more wood duck pictures. These are not the woody uh, in the mill spawn, but these are in Dallas. Again, uh, same uh, low perspective is what making the image for me here. So these two images, I put it out there for two reasons. One is the perspective. It's the same bird, same location, but two different lighting conditions. On the left, uh, you see it is direct sunlight giving that, uh, exposing that iridescent colors on the feathers on his head. And on the right, it was taken in a foggy morning. Uh, so the light was not hitting directly. That's why you're not seeing the iridescent colors. So this is again, another question that I get a lot. Uh, do you add those colors uh, through Instagram? So many people who haven't seen this bird ask me that. Also, if you don't see this bird in the, direct sunlight, you never get to see that iridescent color. Uh, so that's why I have this two images side by side to give you a comparison. And then the same bird or uh, same uh, wood deck in a different lighting, it is like more of a side, uh, side lit. So even though you don't see the full iridescence in the head, you can see some of them. Yeah. Again, the, so let me s slip in another question from Susan, uh, because you've said this a couple of times. When you're getting in the water, what do you mean? Are you wading in? Are you on a boat? What, do, what are you doing? Uh, to know. Different things. So, so far, whatever I've seen, I, I was on the shore. Uh, for this one, I was in the water, uh, like standing. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was like uh, probably knee high water. And then I was like, sometimes I uh, sit on my uh, knees. And then I'll have my tripod. So okay. uh, the camera will be on the water level. Okay. So you're, are you mostly shooting on a tripod? Uh, on some conditions. Okay. Yeah. Like this, if I, I'm in the water, obviously I, I, I'll keep that in the tripod so that I don't have to carry it in the same level. Okay. Yeah. And Thank uh, you. for this one, when I'm on the shore, I just lay my camera on the ground and I'll be like laying there flat. And then this is a common loon again. Uh, so this was a uh, shot from a kayak. Uh, so these birds, they don't come to the shore much. They always uh, hang out in the middle of the lake. So I was on a kayak with another guy. Uh, and then I was shooting with my camera uh, almost close to the water. No tripod or anything, a handheld, but I was using the flip screen, uh, holding my camera close to the water in the eye level to get this eye level shot. So basically there's nothing common about these loons. Um, I think there is excitement about this particular bird. So is that something that you found here in Texas? Where do you find loons? Okay, so you find them in Texas, but you wouldn't believe it is a common loon because they, they, they are in their winter colors when they are here, ah. uh, which is like flat black and brown, that's it. Okay. Uh, these are found in northern states, uh, and that's where they have these breeding colors. So I was in New Hampshire for this day, uh, for this shot. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's where they breed, and that's when they uh, have all these beautiful colors. Okay. Yeah, I, I've seen them here in Texas, but uh, I whatever I've seen pictures, and then when I saw them in uh, in person, I couldn't believe it is the same bird. So they are okay. so different. Okay. So you basically, so basically, if we want this loon our loons to look like him, we really need to go to his, his mating grounds yes, a little yeah. further up. Okay. Yeah. Northern states. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It's a same loon in a different perspective. So again, that being that low perspective, make the difference here. Uh, otherwise you will have all the ripples and whatever is there in the immediate background. And that, that will ruin the shot. 
so again this i was on the kayak shooting with my camera uh, handheld close to the water with this flip screen on and then this is a clapper rail and uh, this was like a, in a wetland so i was laying in the mud uh, so this is like a very tough bird to get actually normally uh, and they won't come out much so i was like i had to wait patiently for a long time and then uh, get this perspective this one i was keeping the camera on the ground no tripod or anything and then on the left is american avocet again a wetland bird uh, i i had to get really muddy to get low on this one and on the right it's a black bellied plover uh, this is from corpus christi uh, so this one i was actually in the ocean water so this is like a small inlet kind of thing where the bird is standing and then there is water behind and then all those green uh, greenish grass on the ground on the background so i wanted to get that green color so that's why i went into the water and shoot towards a uh, towards a land because otherwise when you shoot from here normally what we get is ocean or sky in the background and the green background is much appealing for me and then there's another oyster catcher uh, probably in the uh, yeah same location as the first uh, flight shot that i saw i showed uh, again backlit on the ground here you can uh, see almost i was like almost under the sand so basically there was like a small uh, raised level of sand Uh, right in front of my camera giving that smooth uh, transition from the foreground to the bird's body and in the background there were some lights like artificial lights i think it was vehicle or some other building or something giving you those blobs uh, out of focus blobs and then this is me <laughs> this is how i shoot short birds uh, laying flat uh, so this was in bolivar flats in galveston do you have are you using some form of um prop for your lens what's underneath your lens uh it, it's like a plastic bag with a t-shirt in it so it will go it is like a you can use things like ground ports but uh, when you use a ground port it gives you a bit more height uh, which okay. i don't like this okay. gives me like this is like a really ground level so that's why okay. i use the lens yeah so that that plastic cover that uh, helps me uh, to like not have any mud on my camera or anything okay that's commitment right there yeah you got to do what you have to do <laughs> okay uh yeah then the foreground uh so just like the background if you are including something in the foreground you need to be uh, making sure that is like really out of focus so basically um i try to avoid if there is something right in front of the bird or along with them uh I, because the, those won't be blurred out when you shoot so uh if i have something in the foreground it will be right in front of my camera or lens so that it will be blurred out and sometimes it can be used to frame the shot uh which i'll show you some example uh in the next slide so this is another wood deck so as you can see on the left there is some green elements so how that is achieved is i was shooting through some grass so i was sitting on the shore and then right in front of me there was some grass so i moved it a bit uh, so that i can peek my lens through it and then have some of that in front of the lens uh, also not blocking the bird so the focus was uh, on the uh, bird so everything else was blurred out giving this uh, a uh, dreamy look for me and uh, something that i try to achieve a lot of times whenever possible this one again a wood duck again on the left you can see it's all grass so just on top of the uh, bird's head you will see that uh, round so that is something uh, achieved by the light that is hitting on those grasses that i'm shooting through you can see some blur blurs of uh, grass in that blob and then this is a gambus quail again uh, there was like a slightly elevated grassy area in front of the in front of my lens and the bird so i just lay down and to have that in the foreground in a out of focus manner it's a eastern towhee so this is a uh, what i was talking about framing uh, the shot so again shooting through some flowers beautiful spring flowers and since it was so close to the uh, 
lens and where i was standing it was all blurred out and uh, making the bird pop and then yeah this is an interesting shot for me so yeah i was shooting this uh, wood deck uh, and then i was trying to frame in in a horizontal way and then this uh, guy uh, canada goose uh, he just came in front of the lens and stood there so i waited for a while uh, maybe he, uh, i thought he'll move or something because if i move i'll be in the water left and i was not prepared for that uh, that day and i can't move to the right so i just waited for a while uh, thinking that okay it's a bird uh, after all so i thought it'll move but both of them didn't move uh, so i had to make something out of it that's when i had this idea so so i couldn't order focus on the wood deck so i had to uh, turn it to manual focus and manually focus on the wood deck and uh, blur out the canada goose that is right in front of me uh, it's something different i i don't think i've ever done that before or after this frame uh, having a out of focus bird in front yeah and then uh, the next thing is how you get different poses all right so a bird is something uh, when whenever they land they quickly move around uh, so some birds look better from the front and some birds look better from the back so that's what i meant by different poses so of course uh, when whenever the bird is looking away there is no point in clicking just having the body or head turn over uh, it doesn't look appealing to me so i try to avoid because there are other factors like buffer uh, buffer speed and focus uh, focusing issues for the camera so if you just keep keep clicking whenever the bird lands on the perch looking away you might end up lose filling all the buffer and when the bird is in the right pose you will miss the shot so i always try to avoid whenever they land and looking away i try not to click and then wait for the side on or front down or over the shoulder positions and then there are some occasions when uh, birds will give you some different poses uh, like no uh, other than the normal pose they sometimes hang or uh, they'll flap their wings or something like that for which i'll show you the example so this is a eastern bluebird uh these two shots as you can see it's from the same perch different lighting is probably around like uh, uh, one hour apart so that's why different lighting so in the first image he is giving over the shoulder look it's a male bluebird by the way so in the first image uh, you can see blue blues mostly uh, giving uh, there is a signal of the orange in their body but in the second image you can see a more of a front down side down position giving you uh, both the colors so yeah i like both actually this is one of my favorite birds and then this is a indigo bunting again on the first image you can see the front side uh, just the blue feathers but if you see the second shot you will see the uh, shoulder on uh, over the shoulder look with all those all their beautiful back feathers i really love like the first one too but uh, yeah if if i have to pick one i would pick the uh, on one on the right and then this is a rose breasted grosbeak so this is another factor that i always consider uh, when i uh, process my shots or even taking shot because this bird is named after their rose colored breast so i always try to have that included in the shot uh, i almost never click this bird from uh, behind because you don't see that get to see the rose breast which is what they are named after and then this is a northern parula it's a warbler species which i captured in during the spring migration in port arances so as you can see uh, he landed gave me different poses this is one of the best better ones i shot in the beginning uh, the perch is good the background is good the pose is good but then after clicking a couple of shots i waited uh, because uh, they move around fast the warblers they don't sit still and i was hoping for a something different and after 2 seconds he gave me this which is like yeah he was hanging down like this it it didn't happen for a long time it was like probably for 2 seconds and then he came down but since i waited i didn't feel the buffer i was able to click the shot otherwise i would have missed this so this is another one of my favorite shots again the pause makes all the difference uh, you don't get to see the uh, yellow color in his uh, front side but still the pause is what makes a uh, shot for me here and then this is a northern flicker 
uh, again uh, he just landed sat there just gave me some portrait shots so i just snapped a few and then waited and then i got this uh, so basically he was like flapping his uh, wings before flying off so again uh, this shots lot different from the standard portrait where you're not seeing much of his yellow under wings where you can see all that beautiful yellow colors here so uh, yeah if you have to pick one shot from this this is definitely the one and that is only because of the weight that i uh, did or didn't fill the buffer with the first standard portrait shots and then this is a baltimore oriole again a hanging pose which i love always when birds do that and then again another wood duck uh, he they always do this uh, flapping of the wings they go under the water and then come up they sometimes flap they sometimes shake their heads giving you different uh, shots so this was like much faster shutter speed because of the action and then uh, obviously the uh, under uh, un under wings the, it is showing off all the details which you don't get to see otherwise and then these are some preening birds another great opportunity you get whenever they preen they'll give you some different poses you get to see the areas of their body that you don't get to see otherwise on the left is a gadwall uh, so it's like preening in the water again i was in the water for this uh, so i was after standard portrait shots i was waiting for something to happen and then he did this uh, this was again from uh, austin Uh, from the first year of my bird shots uh, and on the right it's a killdeer again he's doing the preening uh, so they're much curious birds actually they they're they're always on the ground and when you wait they do all this kind of different things uh, if you wait and uh, watch watch them for a while and then this is another wood duck as i said they were, they dip their head every now and then and then as he was coming up and shaking the shaking his head i i was uh, taking this shot giving those droplets and just the head shot okay uh, yeah next is an imp important or interesting topic <laughs> flight and action shots so yeah basically it's one of the most challenging aspects of bird photography uh, so what i always do is uh, don't um, chase the birds or try not to get the uh, uh, butt shots or going away shots uh, so what i always do is when i see some birds around and then uh, try to anticipate which direction they fly and then wait for them to fly with a specific background in my mind so if you try to approach them they might fly in the oppo opposite direction and you won't get a shot so that's why i uh, always wait and another thing is uh, always write for the uh, wait for the correct moment because um, if you again if you try to click earlier and try to fill up all the buffer then you won't you'll miss the exact moment that that is that you want so that's why i said uh, click at the right uh, moment uh, then again uh, wait for the cleaner background uh, rather than having a clutter or something like that so only click when you when the bird reaches that background or about to reach that background and then this is one uh, area where you uh, where uh, having a better gear will help you uh, when you have more, more frame per second and then you can capture different wing positions uh, so if you have a lesser uh, if you have a camera with lesser frame per second you might miss that particular uh, wing positions and then of course faster shutter speed uh, if you want to freeze the action and if you have a blur if you want a blur effect you can have a slower shutter speed uh, and then it will produce some wing blurs and then uh, yeah this is a hood and merganser probably one of the most favorite uh, flight shots that i have ever taken so this is again uh, done using just waiting that's it uh, so th th these guys are found here in irving during winter so there are a couple of ponds where they hang out and what happens is that those ponds are like they it is used by many people for walking their dogs and stuff and these birds are really skittish really skittish you can't approach and i don't have a portrait shot of this decks yet that's simply because i can't get a cleaner background or get close so on this occasion what i did was uh, when i spotted this birds i waited i waited uh, with this grass in front in, in the background and i knew if they fly through there i can get this clean background 
So I waited and I waited for somebody to come around and maybe walk their dogs close to the pond. And uh, it happened after a while. And one dog tried to jump into the water and scared these birds. And they were, since they couldn't go that way, they were coming towards my way. And I was ready with the background in the frame. Uh, all I had to do was grab the focus and click. So that's how I got the shot. And this one is American Kestrel, another very tough bird. You can't, uh, I don't have a portrait shot of this bird yet. You can't approach, they'll fly away. And this one, uh, he, I saw him on the ground with some cats. And I, when, I, when I reached that spot, I noticed that there was no trees or anything nearby. So if he, he can't fly away because it's like just open land. So I, I like kind of predicted that he would come this way and I just waited. I was driving around and I just parked my car and waited and I got the shot. Again, I was not having enough light to have the shutter speed to freeze the action. So I just used a slower shutter speed giving this blurred wing effect, but still have the bird's eye and the body in a perfect focus. And then these two uh, shots, the, on the left is bald eagle. Uh, again, uh, it's more of an anticipated shot because um, when I saw him, he was on the river and then there was another bald eagle sitting behind us on the tree. So it was kind of calling, maybe they're mates, I don't know. So uh, I kind of waited there on the banks and then this girl was uh, going to the other bird, almost like passing through just over my head but then I was it is kind of a tough shot because approaching a bird uh, the, uh, when the birds are approaching uh, the camera sometimes can't focus uh, easily so this is kind of a once in a lifetime shot for me approaching and straight into me he was like literally on my face so uh, I, I cropped it like this because I clipped one of the wings so that's why I cropped it in this way giving like a more of an intense look and the bird on the right is a scissor tail flycatcher. Again, this was taken in Austin. So uh, this was again, um, more of a lot of, I had to wait a lot for this. Uh, so they, they always hang out in, in the pole there. Uh, it's like, it, it isn't a, I think it is some volleyball ground or something like that. So they always hang out on that pole. And then, uh, so normally when they catch something, they'll go to the ground or the field next next to the ground and then catch something, come back to the pole. So when I saw this happening a few times, I kind of uh, waited there uh, and uh, anticipating this flight shot. So next time when he went to the ground and I knew that he was going to come back and I was in the right position with the uh, good light and background. And that's when I got the shot uh, coming back to the pole. He didn't catch anything and that would have been better if he had something in his beak, but he didn't have anything, unfortunately. Um, then Kathy made a comment about your incredible level of patience, but she is curious, how long do you spend in a location? Um, Typically. As, uh, it's like uh, when I, when I plan something and go there, I, I can wait as much as I uh, want to get the shot. Like I waited four hours in the blind in, in the water sometimes and haven't gotten a shot. So that happens sometimes. But yeah. then when I get and when I plan for something and perceive something, and then in the end, when I get it, it's like a much better feeling. So all that weight, whatever happened before, it won't even come to mind. Yeah. Okay. So these are uh, pileated woodpecker in eastern East Texas. So totally different shots, but of the same bird in the same location. Yeah, the left one was like, uh, it, both are like under cloudy conditions, so uh, it had to be like a high ISO shot. But still, uh, it was my first time seeing this bird, so I was like thrilled. And then the second one on the right is like a bit of a different shot for me. I didn't really plan for this, but it, somehow I got that, and I really like the effect, especially the darker, uh, darker areas around the bird and some leaves with the heart sign. I I didn't plan for this, but it just came out. I really like that shot. So the same bird, same spot, but in totally different lighting conditions and frames. Uh, the bird on the left is an American oversett, and on the right is a black neck stilt. 
both are like wetland birds uh, so i find this in south texas so again i will have to get muddy to get these birds they like uh, they'll be always in the mudlands and stuff uh, again they fly around uh, always like uh, you, if you anticipate or you just notice them for some time you'll know the direction in which they are flying so in these cases also all i had to do was wait uh, patiently without moving or because when you move or make certain movements uh, they will always fly to the other side uh, but if you wait uh, and make don't make any noise they'll do their normal thing and you can get your uh, anticipated shots so both of these are like in wetlands in south texas and then these are like uh, yeah uh, american robin on the left and european starling on the right not many uh, like most liked birds but still uh, it's nice to get them doing something like this uh, this was here in dw area uh, uh, both on different days but uh, they they were they are always in this area eating that berry sometimes they'll sit patiently on a perch and eat and sometimes they do this crazy thing like flying and catching a berry so when i noticed uh, this happening i just waited for the next thing to happen and then god is god these shots so one on the right is towards the early morning that's why you have the golden uh, colors and on the left is uh, much later in the day again uh, getting these action shots with their berry in their berry in their beak it's like something special uh, although I, when i went there i didn't plan for this but uh this was achieved j- just by watching them doing this and then and is waiting when they'll do it later this uh, yeah again a wood duck uh doing some flapping again this uh this those droplets is what um, make this shot special for me uh higher shutter speed uh like waiting for them to flap to get those droplets i was in the water for this uh, in winter so yeah a bit a bit wait for this like a normal portrait i was getting but then for this action shots to get i i had to wait for a while and then uh these like um uh, feeding uh, shots uh so this happens mostly with the wading birds and stuff so on the left is a tricolored heron with the, so once they catch the fish they toss this into their uh, beaks so that's just, i could just time the shots so that the fish was right in between the beak and on the right is a yellow crown night heron with a turtle so that's like a, i never knew the heat turtle but this just happened right in front of me giving some action shots so for these uh, if you know these birds they'll just stand still for a long time mm-hmm. so you just have to be like patient when they do something because just standing there uh, taking act, uh, portrait shots you'll get bored after a while then you just have to wait for this uh so yeah like i said anticipation is the key for this and then this is the great blue heron so this guy was like standing still for more than an hour i was there in the area shooting some other birds but i had an, uh, an eye on this bird because he was like near the water and i was like kind of uh, i knew that he was going to catch something and then uh when he caught this he was like facing the other side so i was not getting any uh, good shots but then he was he struggled a lot to swallow this fish and then later after some time he turned this way uh, to the good light and gave me this shot which is like uh, i kind of like uh, this the way that fish is positioned within his beak uh, it's like an extension so yeah he he, he struggled a lot with this uh, swallowing this fish again i was on the ground waiting for this to happen uh, there was some other birds also in the area but uh this is uh, this is the shot from that day for me yeah and then yeah next time i'm going to talk about the seasons linda is there any question um i'm going to hold a couple of questions cuz i want to kind of get you to move through your presentation okay. yeah okay. Yeah, just to make sure whether I'm clear or not clear or <laughs> so. No, I th- I I think it's going to I think it's been great. Um I think you've gotten a lot of people excited about bird photography. Okay. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, yeah. So now the next thing is about seasons. Uh yeah, my most favorite season of course uh, spring for various reasons. So the first is spring migration. Yeah, spring migration through uh, Texas is like probably world famous i've i've met so many people uh, from all over the world uh, in south texas like from england south africa 
and even south america even though they get to see the birds there because of the phenomena of uh, spring migration they come here to see the, all those birds because they travel across the gulf overnight all these small warblers it's like a yeah whenever i started uh, learning more about birds that is something really blew my mind uh, i couldn't believe how they do this Uh, like we i can't even travel 10 miles without a gps and these little birds they travel like all these miles yeah just like that. i couldn't believe that actually so spring migration is always something i'm really interested always wait for uh, and uh, more than just photography it's all about the experiences there i've met so many people uh, from different parts of the world uh, like birders who has like years of experience sharing their different experiences from the various spring migration so it is more than photography for me uh, during that time uh, and then uh, during the spring birds mate uh, so they have uh, we can capture couple interactions and then of course the babies later so yeah the, this is a blue wing wobbler this is my first ever uh, shot from a spring migration during my first year of photography uh, so this guy was like giving us a shot so it's like a it's taken in port arances birding center so all these birds once they cross the gulf they just land to the first wooden area uh, they see so in port arances uh, that's a that's a great birding location during that time so that evening uh, this guy was like uh, playing around us uh, like on on the ground literally close to our feet and then doing all this hanging position trying to feed and gave this gave me some amazing shot is like it was very close i had to zoom out from my 600 so it's one of my favorite memories from spring migration and then on the left is a golden wing wobbler uh, this was my first shot of one and he was carrying a bug so that was like special shot for me on the right is a cape may wobbler which is not like a normal uh, migrant through uh, the port arances area but this particular e- uh, year uh, there were quite a few and they were like literally hanging out everywhere and this guy was like with a uh, with a caterpillar and this is one story that i've shared in instagram so this particular uh, bird caught this caterpillar and was like uh, he was banging it on that particular branch before swallowing he was kind of struggling to solo that and then suddenly uh, another bird another wobbler came and snatched it so he did all the hard work but it was taken by the other bird so it was kind of funny watching that and then you get all this curious looks from these little guys it's so amazing so they're all all these uh, all these migrant places they don't care about the human being much they just want to uh, land feed uh have water and then move on so they don't uh, they always have this curious looks whenever they see human beings or they they just come so close sometimes so i always try to get these uh, straight into the camera looks of these cuties so on the left is uh, american red start and on the right is a, a magnolia wobbler both are beautiful birds and then like i said couple interactions is like a uh, wood pair wood the pair on the left is the female on the right is the male and then this is a american vigian couple uh, again this was shot here in irving so yeah i wanted to get that perfect heart shape but uh, at the at that time uh, the male on the left was turned towards the other side and by the time he turned his head he was like almost crossed the beak of the other so it almost a perfect shot <laughs> and then the babies of course so yeah these are uh, loon babies on the left uh, the same location that i uh, showed earlier the common loons uh, it was almost a, like an amazing experience seeing these babies ride on their parents back it's like made all my trip worth it and on the right is a wood duck family they always have seven or eight babies together so this is captured here in dallas again more loon babies i can never get enough of these babies so they they are so cute i got so many shots i'm still processing through those uh, shots from that trip so they they always ride on their parents back until they reach a particular uh, size and then 
yeah they get into the water uh it's like one tiny baby so it's like uh they they have on, they feel only a small size in the frame so it was like kind of tough to focus so again i was in the kayak and shooting with my uh camera close to the water so for this one i was like i had to get really low because the baby is not high enough so almost I, my camera almost got wet i could feel water in my hand when i was shooting this but still getting that low level is like key for me here and then you get all this interaction feeding shots so these babies are a bit uh, more uh, bigger so they uh, they they are fed with the bigger fishes more babies so on the left is a muscovy duck uh, baby uh, so the moments on the right you can i just framed it in such a way that he is uh, the baby was under the mom's wings and on the right is the owl a uh, great hound owl babies it was shot in a nest yeah and the next favorite season for me is winter just because of the ducks that we get here so all these ducks that migrate here just for the winter and they spend their uh, breeding somewhere else so because of that those are like uh, much more skittish than the normal ducks that we see here and makes it more challenging uh, and they're much beautiful too so that's what makes winter special for me otherwise i don't like the winter i i hate cold so that's why i put it tougher conditions so especially when uh, taking photos of these decks either i have to be in the water or near the water which is more difficult during the colder uh, temperature and then another important factor here is uh, the, for the songbird there are less food sources during the winter so they always come to the feeder feeders or wherever you keep the food so that's something that makes easier to sh shoot those birds during the winter and then uh, yeah this is one of my all time favorite images it's a buffalo head duck one of my favorite ducks so for this i was in the water early morning uh, winter like close to zero temperature zero degree zero degree celsius temperature and then i was also using a hide because uh, this these guys are very skittish they don't let you get close so i've been trying to get this uh, duck for, for a portrait shot for a long time and then finally got this i had to put in a lot of uh, time for this one so this one um, i was there well before sunrise because i didn't want to uh, make them aware that somebody's there so i was there in the dark waiting in my blind in the water so that i can get this perspective uh, and then when the uh, sun uh, was above the horizon with those golden rays i got the shots um, so in the background there was some dry grass that's what giving that golden look in the background again uh, you get to see all these colors on this deck only when the sunlight directly hits them otherwise they just appear black and white i, I i've been accused of uh, like photoshopping this deck sometime like somebody told me that they have they have seen only black and white in this deck and uh, i have colored them with these colors so the fact is that they haven't seen them in direct sunlight that that's the reason <laughs> so to get that colors you need to see them in the right uh, light and then this is a canvas back duck uh, again this was shot in austin um uh another beautiful deck uh, they just spent the wind winter here again i was on the banks for this one not in the water but uh laying in the side of the uh, pond uh they they are another tough uh, duck to get close to but again uh, waiting there for much more time and they got more comfortable and came for a Zoom by closer to me, and then uh, this is uh, I forgot the name of this guy. So again, this was in the same pond as the previous one. Yeah, this is a northern shoveler. Sorry, again it was a raining day. Uh, that that's where you see the droplets. So I just had to slow down my shutter speed a little bit uh, to get those uh, blurred water droplets. Again, more ducks. So. on the left is a least grieb this was in P mills pond austin so he was just giving company to the woody for some days during the winter and again i was like almost on the edge of the water almost uh, touching the uh, edge of my lens in the water that's where you have all that blurred foreground uh, 
at the more bottom of the frame. He was doing this wing flap, and uh, yeah, I had good light to get those uh, wings frozen. And on the right is the American Vision. Uh, it's like a tight portrait shot. He was like very close, and I was in the blind, so that helped. And again, uh, these is, uh, those colors are achieved only when you have direct light on them. Otherwise, they just look uh, green but very dark. So there was a question. Um, I think it was Kathy wanted to know: Do you have a portable blind? Yes, uh, I, I'll I'll explain that. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm going to talk about the gear, so I've included the blind in that because that's okay. an important gear for me. Again, uh, this uh, on the left is a gadwall, yeah, preening, and on the right is a ring neck deck. Both are shot in Austin. Uh, again, preening, and they are here only for the winter, so the, that's why that's one reason I love winter shooting. And then the summer. So summer is all about the uh, birds that are breeding here. Uh, so we have a lot of colorful birds that breed here. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we have uh, flowers that uh, we can frame the bird or have perches with flowers that will make enhance of shots. And then, of course, uh, when it is very hot or sunny, you get uh, you can shoot only during the beginning or end of the day. But then we have more time to scout during the uh, weekend so that's what i do during the middle of the day i don't shoot <laughs> okay so probably the most beautiful bird out there and i'm very glad that they spend the summer here painted bunting both are shot here in the dfw area uh, uh so yeah they love these sunflowers they just love hanging out on them top of them they just sometimes hang on them and try to eat seed from inside that so that's why I got the one on the right. And on the left is like just a singing pause. I love that purge for some reason. Uh, those colors, red colors. And probably uh, frames the bird very good here in the start. And then we have summer tanages that uh, spend the summer here. This was shot in Mineola, East Texas. Uh, so summer tanages on the left. And on the right is a protonotary wobbler. It's a bit uh, lengthy name for such a small bird. So both of these these are shot in Mineola, East Texas, and the, these birds bre breed here. One of the very few warblers that breed in Texas, actually. And then, yeah, on the left is a indigo bunting. It's kind of a different, busy shot, but kind of liked it shooting through those uh, branches. Uh, and then on the right is a dixisel. So again, this, this is one of my favorite charts. So yeah, we get all these sunflower feed, fields here in uh, North Texas during summer. And then birds always love to sit on top and sing. So this was like a, those, obviously that bee made it special. I didn't plan for that shot. I was just shooting and then notice the bee uh, in the frame uh, during the shot. But uh, yeah, I, I, I love that shot. Didn't plan for it though. Yeah, and uh, then I'm coming to the met methods of shooting. Uh, so basically, um, uh, most of the people do only just walk around, chase the bird. And uh, since I think about, uh, think like a bird photographer than a birder, I just uh, like to see, get shots uh, rather than just um, see the bird or chase them. Uh, that's why I approach this in a different way. Uh, so b basically, uh, I wait a lot uh, rather than uh, just get a lot of birds and um, not good enough shots. I would prefer getting only one bird, but a good shot that I can uh, present. So that's why I do this uh, waiting game a lot. So what I do is uh, when I drive around or walk around, uh, whenever I see birds uh, flying around or they, if they hang out in a particular spot that I scouted before, uh, I just wait uh, and uh, with having a particular branch or in the area or with a particular background in my mind, I just wait there. Uh, so car is a good blind uh, in my experience. Uh, whenever I sit inside the car, uh, birds are much taller. So because of that, I use car as a blind many times. And then of course I use the pop-up blinds. Uh, uh, so whenever I notice this uh, area which the birds uh, like flying around or if they are feeding on something,
specific uh, next day or the, whenever i visit next i just go there and wait in my blind uh, so that they won't know that i am there but if they do their normal stuff and i can get the shot in their whatever in they are sitting or with a good background so this is one shot that i uh, got like that so this is my first ever painted bunting shot uh, it was in austin and this was taken from a parking lot so i knew that these birds exist the, they are there in that park so whenever i arrived there in the morning i saw them like moving around and then i i didn't get out of the car i just parked there and waited near this tree and after probably an hour or so they just uh, they just made their uh, way into this bush and gave me the shot with a cleaner background and kind of a good perch uh, so much better than the shot that i got before or they were hanging out before this so yeah this this is a memorable and special shot for me and then these are also taken from my car so on the left is a eastern middle arc uh, it's it was in galveston driving around and i they they sit on top of all these bushes and sing in the morning so that's how i got the shot on the right uh, although it is taken from my car it is kind of a setup shot so that branch was put up there by me it was like there in the bushes i just removed one branch and uh, kept it in this location where this painted bunting normally hangs around uh, but i didn't use a pop up blind or anything for this i just stood uh, sat in my car and uh, used the car as a blind and then this again like just walking around again in mineola area on the left is a prothonotary wobbler this is kind of one, one of my uh, small in frame shots that uh, that was really liked by everybody maybe it's because of the background elements and stuff so kind of a backlit shots that's why you have all those uh, bokeh balls in the background and uh, on the right is a indigo bunting again just walking around in a foresty area and i found this guy sitting on top and singing uh, this if you notice this both are in the same branch uh, so basically this is a hot spot in during spring spring migration in port terrences is like a famous tree uh, there it's a mulberry tree and all these migrant birds love this tree so all i had to do was wait uh, so these were taken in different days different lighting conditions but on the same spot as you can see uh, so yeah all i did was wait Uh, just and it's waiting for somebody to land there and having the good background and obviously this mulberry uh, berries yeah and then uh, the other approach is setups so somebody some people call these uh, staged and some people are against this kind of photography but uh, i love it and i do that a lot uh, so uh, it requires a lot of patience so many days you won't you might not get anything you set up the branch you set up the you purchase in a particular area where you can expect a good background and light uh, and also can really perceive the shot how you want it but the negative point about this is uh, you wait there you have all the setup but birds might have different plans so i have sat in uh, such setups in my blind for days without even a single shot so that's a disadvantage of that kind of photography Uh, so this can be done uh, anywhere literally uh, so we can make use of water food or calls so these are the three things that will really attract birds anywhere so they don't come down for everything say they come down to the ground level just for water or food or if you use calls they think that there is another bird of the same species in the same area and they come down to check out so uh, basically this can be done anywhere uh, there are many people who does this in their backyard but the uh, different things are instead of shooting them on a uh, dry perch or a dry stick or even on the feeder what i do is uh, set up different kind of perches that are better looking uh, and that's how this kind of uh, shots are done and it's not new there are many photographers who do that and uh, that's how i learned about all this uh, so i do this uh, during spring migration in some places and also in summer uh, locally so yeah uh, i'll show you some pictures that i have gotten like this okay so yeah this is a 
again painted bunting shot in austin if you see he is sitting on a pole or on the right one he is sitting on a dry branch uh, yeah of course it's a beautiful bird but then uh, when the branches are dry or unnatural it makes it doesn't look that good for me so yeah when you look at the he is on a better looking perch and that is like more uh, apt to his leg size like the branches uh so this uh, this was set up uh, completely and uh, i was uh, i attracted this bird using water so i had a bowl of water in that area for a long time like for the whole summer i used to maintain that so they they use the uh, water uh, always like uh, there was a painted bunting and an indigo bunting in the area who make use of that water during the summer so this branch was set up there uh, with a good light and good background and i was in the car so that's why i got this shot this is a cardinal again a setup shot so i think you can see it's a beautiful branch during spring we get all these flowers so i just uh, cut that somewhere and uh, keep it near a food source or a water source and have them land on it before going to the water or food so you are waiting with a good frame good light good background all you need is a bird so when they feel like they'll come and land and if you're lucky you can get the shot that's how all the setup shots work uh, yeah this is a dark eyed jenko so it was taken in west texas again at one of my friends backyard so he has been feeding birds uh, for a long time and then we do this setup there so normally he'll have like a normal dry branch dry stick for them to land but whenever we shoot Uh, or we whenever we sit in the blind we keep this uh, better looking perches and have the birds land on them before going to the food again uh, much better looking perches uh, so this was taken in galveston during spring migration uh, so the as you can see the same branch different birds on the left is a rose-breasted grosbeak and on the right is a baltimore oriole uh it was taken during the different times of day i was waiting in the blind and then gray catbirds on the same branch uh, couple actually so that was surprising uh, it was the same branch as you can see and then more surprises this was never planned they started eating those berries uh so giving those interesting shots so yeah they uh, although i planned for the whole day these guys finished up the berries and probably 2 3 hours i didn't expect that actually and then this is a rose-breasted grosbeak but a female snatching the berry this is a eastern bluebird again a setup shot so these guys love uh, mealworms so that's how we attract them uh, so those mealworms were placed on that branch uh, near the flowers and some nook and corners this was taken he after he finished off all the Uh, meal worms that's why there is you can't see anything there in the uh, scene again uh, bluebirds this was taken in lake fork one of my friends place he, he has been feeding birds for a long time uh, again uh, we keep the meal worms in between those flowers and stuff so this is a male on the right and female on the left uh, that was like a special shot landing i mean having them both land on the same frame again the uh, image on the left i've already shown but uh, there's a northern flicker and on the right is a red bedlead woodpecker so both are same branch so we uh, we uh, use the what is it uh, so we uh, kept some food sources in between those uh, we put some holes and pushed in some of the uh, food source suet yeah probably some suet yeah. okay yeah. i was not getting that yeah. <laughs> okay okay so yeah we put some holes in those branches and put the sweet in between them and then have these uh, birds land on it so these branches actually i was on a trip to caddo lake so i collected these branches from there actually these uh, mosses and uh, all these different looking branches i collected from there and i brought it to lake fork because i know birds are there we just have to put up good branches for them to land so this was all taken in one morning uh, different birds i think i got also the downy woodpecker on the same branch but I, i didn't get a good head pose so i didn't put that up here 
So yeah, these these are the uh, examples of uh, setup shots. As you can see, you can see uh, good perches, good background. Everything is like perceived. Uh, you only need the good birds to land on it. So for that, we use of make use of food sources and water. And then finally, I come to the gear. So here is the uh, blinds that I use. So I use uh, mainly two blinds. Uh, the one on the left is a pullover blind, and that's me sitting on that. And I was waiting for a kingfisher one morning in uh, Mineola, and I, my friend Chad took this shot. Uh, yeah, we. I think I waited for more than two hours, and finally got that sh uh, bird to land on that branch for two seconds. Thankfully, I got the shot. Uh, yeah, so this is how I wait. So sometimes. Uh, it's like four hours. Sometimes it's half an hour. Sometimes it's two minutes. So uh, you can't really predict it. And on the right is a chair blind, much more comfortable. There is a chair inside that, and you can push that over your head, and then have your lens through that hole. Uh, it's like if you if you are predicting much more wait waiting time, this is better actually. So I use this both sometimes. The one on the left is more uh, advantage for me because you can stand up and shoot as well. If you if you want that per perspective, you can also make use of a chair and sit there as well. Yeah, and then the other gear I use are uh, the Nikon D500 camera and the lens is Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary lens. Uh, that's what I, I use to shoot most of my images. I've also rented some uh, cameras and sometimes, but uh, this is what I normally use. And tripod is an inaural carbon fiber tripod. I, I don't use a tripod much, only when I'm waiting in blind or if I'm in the water. That's when I use the tripod. If I'm just walking around, I don't use any tripod or anything. I just shoot handheld. So that's my gears. And then I'll go to the settings. Yeah, I, I put this at last uh, because uh, all those settings are important, but you can't really have a... Uh, benchmark really so if i if i say that i use this settings uh, this particular f stop and shutter speed and iso that is used for this uh, lighting condition that i am in so uh, you can you you'll have to change it according to the conditions or lighting that you shoot in uh, the that's why the exposure settings are mentioned at the last but then of course the focus mode i always use auto focus mode and then for the flight shots or action shots, I make use of the group area points in Nikon. That's how it is called. And then for portraits, single point so that I can get exact focus on the eye. And then, of course, I use a high burst. Uh, I think it's 10 frames per second in my camera. So I make use of the entire burst always. It's like it has a good buffer. So I always get a, uh, get, uh, end up getting more shots than needed, but I can always delete. Uh, so I just shoot through high burst mode. Yeah, that's about my settings. And then that actually concludes my presentation. So yeah, I would like Perfect. to thank you. Perfect. Yeah. So let me get you to take your um, presentation down. Um, right. There is a question that Ben had. He's curious. Um, do you ever use flash to help bring out the colors in your subjects? No, I've never used flash. Okay. Okay. Um, and I think you covered your gear. Um, that was a Nikon D500, and you typically use a 150 to 600 Sigma. Sigma yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's what you showed. Um, I think somebody had asked earlier on. There is one more question in here that let me see if I can find it. Um, Kathy was curious how do you avoid getting ant bites when you're on the ground? Uh, what bites? Ant bites. Yeah, sometimes I get it. I, I, I have bug sprays <laughs> most of the time. Uh, I'm like more scared of the mosquitoes. I, they annoy me. So yeah. I always use the bug spray. But maybe yeah. that will help with the ant also. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, then this is a wonderful presentation. And I'm going to share with you the, um, the chat um, dialogue because I think you got... I don't think, I know you got people excited about birds. Um, and, and there were quite a few people that are interested in birds in this room. So mm -hmm. that's always that's always fun to, to um, hit those, um, those little sparks of, I'm gonna go out and do that. 
And yeah. one of the participants in the room, her name's Kathy, and she actually is actually in Maine right now. And in her, she had a sign off. It's a little bit later there for her, but she signed off to and said that she's going to go out in the morning to look for a moon, uh, moon, loons. I said moons, but she's going to go out oh, okay. and look for loons in the morning. So that's, yeah, yeah. that's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's good. At least after all the talking that uh, make some sense to for somebody so <laughs> yeah well i'm going to shut um your presentation down and thank you so much for coming on and i know that you know you're not you don't do this for a living you're a you're an avid hobbyist you're very passionate about this i, I know that and i i've only run across you once in person and and you can tell if you you know if anyone looks at his instagram you're going to know this guy loves his birds. And I really, truly appreciate the time you took to put your presentation together because it's very all-encompassing. All um, you covered everything from seasons to backgrounds to getting poses. And this is just a wonderful addition to the project that I am working on and that's to fill my YouTube channel with photographers that are doing what they love and are willing to share what they know with a room full of strangers. So thank you so much for coming. You guys, you can connect with Vin on Instagram at Vinikrish. Um, and I'll link his info in the show notes so you'll have it. Next week, New York portrait photographer Stephen Mack returns with a presentation called retouching a portrait from start to finish. So if you've been wanting to improve your portrait skills, you don't want to miss Stephen's presentation. Until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon. Mm -hmm.